Mike, let me start with the poll question. Warriors good or bad for basketball? Great for basketball, Dan. <laughs> Great. I mean, the, the NBA is not the NFL. This is not Parody Pete's league. It's a league built by the dynastic Celtics. It's a, a league that's known for dynasties. That's like uh, so. Were Bill Russell's Celtics bad for the NBA? Were Were Michael Jordan's Bulls bad for the NBA? Were the Lakers that got to the finals nine times in twelve years in the in, in, in Magic's time were they bad for the NBA? Of course not. This is uh, to me. This is not even difficult. Um, the Warriors are great for the NBA because that's what people turn. They turn in to see stars and great teams. They're not. They're not looking for upsets. It's not March Madness, and so they're they're great for the NBA. I'm also looking at tonight in particular, and let's say you have no rooting interest, but you're looking at this purely from basketball and storylines. Are you rooting for a sweep, or are you rooting for the Cavs to win this game? I, I just think it, it's entirely dependent on who you like. You know, and for people that are a lot younger than us, Dan, it, it depends on you know uh, social media issues or what shoes they're wearing. I mean, it's like, you know, picking a NASCAR driver. Who do you identify with? I think it's entirely dependent on that or whether they think um, the Warriors are villainous because of the way Durant joined them. I mean, people have all their personal reasons. So, I, you know, I, I, I don't think there's any sort of universal standard for why anybody's rooting for anybody. I'm sort of rooting for the series to continue just to justify my absurd position, apparently, <laughs> that, that, that this couldn't happen. Dan, when people were suggesting five games, I was like, hey, listen, LeBron with no Kyrie and no Kevin Love took the Warriors six games two years ago. Don't tell me this is not going six or seven. And obviously, you know, I was way wrong. And the people like Jeff Van Gundy who said five games of that were a lot smarter about anticipating what would happen during this series. So I'm, I'm sort of rooting for it to go a little bit, but I, I love seeing greatness. I, I, I've, I mean, that's the thing I appreciate about the NBA. If somebody's great and you can't stop them, I want to see them over and over again. I want to see the sweep because then we're seeing something we've never seen before. The 16-0? Yeah. yeah. A- and, and it also gives us storylines to talk about. We'll talk about this forever because it's amazing how, like, people are surprised, I guess, that Magic says his Lakers could beat Golden State. Dr. J's 76ers could beat them. I, I want to know the guy who says, you know what, my team would have no chance against Golden State. I'm waiting for one of these Hall of Fame players to say, like Bill Lane Beer to say, you know what, bad boys couldn't be. Then wake me up when that happens because everybody is so territorial and prideful. They think they could beat Golden State. But I, I'm looking for the sweep because it's historical and it gives us something different than we've ever had, and that it is. Does, Dan. I mean, I, that's perfectly a great thing as well to root for. Um uh, by the way, I mean, I think they're uh, – look, you, you've seen the the balance of this league over the years. We both have. I, I mean, I think there are six or eight teams, and I don't mean group of teams. You know, like people try to say, well, the the Pistons, you know, of, of three years. No, no, no. you got to pick one season team to to compare, and I think there's six or – five or six teams that would be in the discussion, maybe maybe more than that, maybe six or seven teams, that would be in the discussion whose players ought to think that, whose Hall of Fame players ought to think, no, we could, we, we could take them. Now, not every championship team. You know, there's some teams I wouldn't want to hear from. But I tell you what, the, the, the 76ers of 1983, that's one of the teams. That's the fo 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 team yeah. that slipped up and lost the game to what, Milwaukee? Um, I, that's one of the teams where I think about it. And I'm like, you know, you know, anybody, anybody who ever played the game would have trouble against that team. So I, you're right. The 16-0 gives you all those sorts of themes to talk about, uh, comparisons to make, and just endless, endless material. He's Michael Wilbon from Pardon the Interruption, also working on the road for uh, Sports Center covering the NBA Finals. Can you remember an athlete as scrutinized as LeBron James? Yeah, Tiger Woods. Yeah, more, more so in some ways. Michael Jordan, yeah. But but not but not Tiger's playing ability. He got scrutinized as a person, and he was pre-social media. LeBron is scrutinized for his playing, and only one thing off the court, really. Well, two things: the decision, and then you know what happened recently in Los Angeles. But other than that, it's been about scrutinizing him it on is, the field, more on the court. I mean, LeBron's been almost letter perfect. 
off the off the court. I mean, I you know, for me. But he's been scrutinized more than any other athlete. Oh, uh, you mean in terms of his play? Well, he doesn't want to take the big shot. You know, he's. But Dan, remember when before the seven years when Jordan couldn't win? Yeah. I mean, that, and that, no, of course, if we had social media, of course not. I mean, didn't but we didn't come. kill him then because the Celtics and Lakers were so good, and the Pistons. That well, but he was a ball hog, and he was a guy who was a scorer could never win. I mean, I think I think we tend to forget. But how... he wasn't the best player in the game at the time. It was still Magic and and Larry who were yeah, sharing that. It, yeah, I guess there was more like three or four years of it. There wasn't thirteen or fourteen years of it. Um, it it's a lot. It's a lot. I'm trying to think if there's a baseball player. Maybe not. I mean, a Rod across. A Rod a a a lot. It, it, you know, but your point. I'm not dismissing. I'm not disagreeing. I'm just thinking through. The other people, I mean, you raise a great point about, about LeBron. And, you know, I thought the other night when he made that pass, we're going to start hearing, where's Danielle Marshall? When do we get to that? <laughs> we're going to start hearing about Danielle. And, you know, it was interesting because I watched the game with, uh, I watched the game with uh, Paul Pierce, Jalen Rose, and Chauncey Billups, and PJ some of it. And, you know, to hear people who have made a living playing and coaching basketball – I mean, you're right. The dissection is just tremendous. Like, I had so – this was one of the enjoyable nights of my professional life watching that game with them. And the, the various opinions and the, the things that come up possession to possession. You know, I, I, the text I was getting from, from Hall of Fame players, two of them, you know, why can't LeBron understand that if he goes into the post, he can rest and still be in the game and still dominate the game from the post position. Why won't he do that? And I, I asked PJ that on air. PJ, why won't LeBron do it? Because, you know, I had dinner last night with Charles Barkley, and I said, Chuck, so when you were tired and you're playing against Sean Kemp, or, you know, pick somebody, but that was a conference final at one point, or you're playing against Carl Malone, what, what did you do if you didn't want to come out of the game? And Charles goes, you go into the post. Well, Jordan did that too. Jordan, uh, yeah, of course. And so why, so as we talk about the scrutiny of LeBron James' game, why won't he do it? But remember when this series started and everybody said, oh, you know, Cleveland can match them. They can shoot threes. And I went, you do not want to go tempo for tempo against no, them. No, you don't. You, no, don't. you don't. And if I've got something that is different than you guys can defend, I, I have to make. I'm use that. Yeah, I have to make Golden State uncomfortable at some point, And they haven't been uncomfortable. And it's too late now. But I agree with yeah. you. It, you know, like you're going to play into their hands if you think you can be out perimeter Golden State. Yeah, you, it, it's, it's, just dumb. it's stupid. You know what? So you know that if you have post game, and LeBron is the best player at it today because nobody does it, it you, you're going to force a double team, which means somebody's going to be open, maybe one of those shooters. you got other shooters on the floor. You, you, you're going to compromise perhaps your defense. You're going to get somebody in foul trouble. Yeah. But you know what, Dan? These are ancient concepts. Yep. They don't play that way anymore. It's all pick and roll. It's all spread the floor. It's all shoot to three. You know what I asked uh, Chris Weber first hour? I said, uh, what, what does Cleveland need? And he said, talent. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's an honest answer. That's a great answer. Okay, does Cleveland do something dra uh, drastic in the offseason? Yeah, I think they will. Because, because if they don't, uh, and, and, you know, it's not the most – well. I think they will. First of all, I think if they don't, Dan, they, they lose LeBron next year. They may lose him anyway. You think he's gone? I don't think he ends his career in Cleveland. I, well, then, then, then we're talking about now. I mean, it's year 15. Would you, would, you trade, would you entertain trading LeBron James? No. I would trade, I would, I would trade Kyrie Irving. I'd be on the phone with the Clippers and Chris Paul's agent saying, why don't we sign and trade? What do we, what do we need to do here? That, and the Clippers would have to do that, Dan, because they look. They know. Wait, they can wait. Can you get anyway. the fire going under Will Bond? Because Skip Bayless just called and said, "Damn, that's a hot take that Will Bond just had." Give me, <laughs> give me some fire under there, Paulie. What? So, Kyrie Irving to the Clippers and get yes. Chris Paul with LeBron. Yeah, because that way you keep Chris Paul, you keep LeBron in Cleveland. <laughs> if Chris Paul with his buddies here, hmm. and Chris Paul, look, if Chris Paul is entertaining the clip, the uh, San Antonio Spurs. Then Cleveland needs to get involved with that and say, wait a minute, we we got a better opportunity. You, Chris Paul is not going to get to the finals with the Clippers unless LeBron goes there. 
and maybe that's possible for, as a free agent. I could see that happening before. I could, I... Me too. I could see that happening. Um, but then we don't. So we're talking one more year here. Yeah. So that means they have to do something drastic, and that means either trading Kevin Love or Kyrie Irving or both. Well, you're not going to get as much for Kevin Love as you would for Kyrie Irving. Right. That's right. I totally agree. So, so you 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 need to to do something this summer, or you then you got the LeBron James discussion again next summer. And I don't think they just let him walk. Maybe they do. Maybe you know. Maybe maybe they they're not going to get a championship this year or next, so they get one out of it. One. Now, that's more than they had in 50 years for Cleveland, but yeah. still. Yeah. I, I think they have to get creative and daring and realize that, you know, they got just the window, you know, while LeBron's window may stay open, you know, three or four more years of winning a championship wherever he's wherever he is. I don't think that necessarily means Cleveland's window remains open. I don't think you have more than one more game left in your voice, Mike. So you better hope for a sweep. This is what happens, you know, you know about this dinner with Charles. You wind up screaming about stuff. And you might have had a beverage or two. No, you know, you know come on, you know me. You know I'm not a beverage guy. Oh. Uh, somebody somebody drank my red wine. I'm not sure it was. <laughs> but it wasn't me. Of course it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't of course me. it wasn't. Uh, Mike, great to talk to you again. Uh, safe travels there. Thanks for joining us. All right, Dan. Thanks, man. You know I appreciate it. That's Michael Wilbon. Wilbon? The Dan Patrick Show. Weekday mornings on Audience.